Nellis CAD can be used to calculate the clearances between your energized conductors as well as OPGWs and ADSSs in any part of your structures and or guy wires. In this particular example, we'll take a typical wood pole inline strain dead end structure uh, with a distribution underbuild and a buck arm configuration, and we'll calculate those minimum clearances. In order to do this, we'll use the function under lines, reports, structure clearances. Pops open a table where we can check all the clearances from all structures from the beginning to the end of the line for each one of the individual voltages. In this case, in the interest of time, we'll just check on structure number 19. We'll leave our required distance at zero for our zero kV, our shield wire, and our ADSS. Our 12.5 kV distribution, we'll use a distance of one foot. And our 115 kV uh, transmission, we'll use a distance of four foot minimum required. Note that if we do have a bundled uh, conductor, we can include that diameter as well. Uh, we'll clear markers before we start, and we'll check clearances between our structures as well. If we only wanted to check clearances to the guides, we could indicate that by checking this box. And finally, we'll want to report on all uh, clearances, not just violations. And I'll go ahead and create a report, and we'll drop the marker so we can graphically see where those problems are. By clicking on OK, we'll check the clearances of all possible combinations on this particular structure. We'll see an overall report. And if we slide across this report, we can see where those clearances are, what those violations are. But better than the report, we can graphically actually see what those clearances are. And we can see where those minimum distances may occur. In the case of our transmission strain insulators, we're actually, even though our insulators are four foot long, we're actually only getting a 2.77 feet clearance between the energized end of the insulator and the down guy from the ahead span. An even worse case is in our distribution underbuild, where in this particular case we have 0.42 feet of clearance between our distribution wire and our ahead um, guy on our lowest phase of our transmission. We do have some other clearances indicated in green for our, for our distribution, but those are where the clearances are acceptable. In the case of our distribution clearance problem of our 0.42 feet, let's see if we can fix that. I'm going to go to Structures. Customize Structure, Move Guy Anchor, and I'll choose the freehand option. And we'll go grab that particular guide that's causing the problem. And I'll move it so that we share the same anchor with the upper guy. We'll click OK to accept the change. And now we have a new guy configuration on a particular structure. And now we can run a new report to see what our clearance problems are, if we have any. We can go to Structure Clearances, just like before. And this time, I'm not going to run a report. And I'm only going to check clearances to guys, uh, since we know our structural uh, clearances, what they already are. We click OK. And in a few seconds, we'll have the clearances to the particular guys. Back up and zoom in. And now that we can uh, have that new guy position, we can see that our clearance is 1.44 feet. So it is acceptable. So you can see that very quickly, we can get the minimum clearances, find out where our problems are that we need to modify in order to keep from having clearance violations in our project. In another example, we'll look at a lattice tower in a tangent configuration. And we'll see what happens when we have a wind case and how that can affect the clearances. So to do that, let's go through and display our conductor. Instead of showing the hot curve, let's display everything with a 6 PSF condition after load with wind from both directions. So we can see how our insiders are swinging in both directions towards the towers, depending on which way the wind is blowing. And now we can just go to Lines, Reports, Structure Clearances. We'll go ahead and check the whole line. And uh, we use 4 foot for a 138 kV side and uh, 340, uh, 5 feet for a 345 kV side. Um, we'll report on all. And uh, in this case, I'm not going to run the text report. We'll just see what we have graphically. And we'll run the line here. And at the end of the line, we have the clearances on the towers. Going back to that particular tangent tower, though, now we can see where our clearances are. And in this case, most of our clearances are OK. But we do have a situation where down here at the body of the tower, out towards the face, we actually have a clearance problem. In this case, we can zoom in and see that that clearance is actually in a three-dimensional um, dimension from a conductor over to the outstanding leg of the tower. Notice that we're measuring to the face of the leg, not actually to the centroid of the member. So we're getting the true clearances. As you can see, TLSCAD makes checking the clearances between wires and structures and guides quick and easy. 
PLS CAD can also do clearances between the wires and minimum three-dimensional clearances to the ground and other obstacles which are discussed in other videos and tech notes.